Good morning. How are you all doing? All right. Uh, welcome to Seattle. Wel welcome to Build uh, 2017. Last year, we talked a lot about conversations as a platform. And this year, you will see in demo after demo, people using conversations as a platform. There are three fundamental characteristics of this new application pattern and worldview. First is the user experience is getting distributed across devices. It's no longer just mobile first. In other words, it's not about one device, an app model for one device. The user experience itself is going to span all of your devices. Easiest to understand it when you think about your personal digital assistant. Your personal digital assistant, by definition, is going to be available on all your devices. And in fact, as you move between devices, it's going to be there, helping you get your tasks done. And by the way, this is an user experience that is not just about input. It has also got state in it. And so that's what leads to, in fact, the second big change that is happening. It's AI. The AI you create is going to be, by definition, more distributed. And so as you see the experience, as well as data and AI getting distributed, there needs to be a fundamental change in the inner and the outer loop of what we as developers do. Continuous integration, continuous deployment is going to change. And that's where things like microservices, containers, are playing a massive role in the outer loop. But one of the things that I think going to completely change how we think about logic is serverless. Serverless computation is going to fundamentally not only change the economics of what is backend computing, but it's going to be the core of the future of distributed computing. So what you see here is a set of factories across the globe, and I'm going to open one of them up. So these are all the different machines on this factory floor. Now, each one of these machines has its own unique t uh, telemetry that it's sending to the cloud. And all of that telemetry was used to create those machine learning modules that are fine-tuned to predict the maintenance needs for each one of these machines and to shut them down in the case of a pending failure. With this new capability that we've developed called Azure IoT Edge and this capability in the cloud, we can now simply take that logic and export it. And they get packaged up into portable Docker containers. And now when I go back to the factory floor, I get an alert on the machine that I just exported that there's new software available for it. So if I open this up, I see the operational dashboard for this machine. And it's got all sorts of interesting information, temperature, power consumption. But there's a really important one I want to draw your attention to, and that's up in the upper right-hand corner, the emergency response time. And what that is is how long it takes for telemetry coming from these devices to be sent to the cloud, evaluated, and in the case of an emergency shutdown, for a signal to be sent back down to the device. Right now, that's a little over two seconds. And with Azure IoT Edge, we could do dramatically better. So these packages that I exported are now available. I'm going to open them up and select them. Now, I've already coordinated ahead of time with the IT and OT teams so that I know that it's safe to update these machines. And when I click Deploy, what's going to happen is we're going to network these containers down to the machine. We're going to activate them. And they're going to start running that protection code right on the machine. And you're going to see the emergency response time drop dramatically. The reason why is that that logic is now running locally. So there's no cloud loop involved in it anymore. So I go ahead and click Deploy. It's now downloading, installing, and running. And now you see we just dropped down to a little over 100 milliseconds. It's a 20x improvement. In a highly controlled environment like a construction site, being able to track equipment, people, 
and what they're doing is critical to workplace safety. So the first thing I want to show you is over to your right, where we have a construction yard, and you're going to see Yana is working. Using our technology right now, both people and object recognition models are currently deployed in that construction yard. And then on the screen there before you, you can see the solution is recognizing Yana in real time, as well as equipment like the green jackhammer on the floor there. So now, imagine if we could take that a step further, recognizing people and then applying a set of policies to them to ensure workplace safety. Over in the construction yard, we have a new employee, Christina, who is showing up for her first day of work. So I'm going to go ahead and onboard her into the system just by using this phone again and typing a simple command. Show me non-employees on the job site. Now, because this is a highly controlled environment and health and safety is so imperative, there are cameras already deployed on that job site. And so they have already captured her photo, and that makes it very easy to onboard her. I can just click on her picture, new person, and go ahead and enter her information. OK, so now she's onboarded. And now I can create a new policy to enforce that credentialed employees can do things like use jackhammers. So I'm going to type a policy. Only credentialed employees can use jackhammers. Now, if somebody who is not authorized to use that equipment comes onto the construction yard, a workflow is going to notify me and people nearby of a potentially dangerous situation. <laughs> like that one, for example. <laughs> you can see the violation's been triggered, and Christina's able to quickly resolve it. Hey, Cortana, what's my day look like? I found three events today. First up, at 9 a.m., you have a meeting titled Packaging Review. It looks like you're low on fuel, so I suggest leaving 10 minutes early to make your 9 a.m. meeting on time. So with the help of Cortana, I'm fueled up and ready to make my meeting on time. There's an accident on 520 that will make you late for your 9 a.m. meeting. Would you like me to let the other attendees know and connect you when it starts? Yes, please. Hi, Laura. Your meeting is about to start. Should I connect you? Yes, please. Hey folks, I'm running a little late, but go ahead and get started without me. No worries, Laura. We got your note earlier. So when I get back to my desk and open up my laptop, Cortana's waiting there for me with an action item from earlier in the day. When I click on the notification, it takes me to Outlook, where there's an email with my meeting summary. It has the attendee list, the video links, the tabs used, and the bot interactions. Best of all, here's my action item. I could go ahead and mark it as complete right in the email. OK. All right, I'm going to try and replicate this here. We're off to a great start. So what I'm doing is I'm making a, a very rough prototype. And what this board does is I can connect into it through these wires, these um, tiny coin cell motors. So these motors will vibrate. I personally think that what this is doing is it's short circuiting whatever feedback loop there is between the brain and the hand that's causing the, the tremors. It's affecting something. I don't quite know what's happening. Woo. Woo. Jesus Christ. Oh God. <laughs> it makes me forget that I have a tremor. We've also put a, a huge investment into our CLI, into our command line interface, and we thought what better way to, uh, to showcase that than to announce today the inclusion of the Azure Cloud Shell inside of the Azure portal.
So another great announcement today is the Azure mobile app on iPhone and Android. I can go in here and look at my web application. I can see my charts and graphs. I can start and stop it. But when you have something great like peanut butter and something great like chocolate, you've got to combine the both of them. So you put the cloud shell in the mobile app. So now I'm with my family at Chili's and I SSH into production. And I know that non-technical spouse will appreciate uh, my attention to detail there at the, uh, with the family. There's no way that that will affect my relationships at all. <laughs> and what's even more exciting about this and what I am very proud to announce is the general availability and the release of whoosh, Visual Studio for Mac. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. You can go and download that, right now, go download, go download that right now, have a wonderful time doing mobile apps and web apps and Unity apps and mobile apps. It's so fantastic. I'm very excited about it. I am pleased to announce and show for the first time the presentation translator add-in for PowerPoint. When I launch it, a dialogue will allow me to select my language, Spanish, and the language I want to display the subtitles, English. Notice there are more than 60 languages supported. Before the presentation starts, a few slides will be added to help attendees get transcriptions on their own device and language. Harry, please join us an attendee on this iPhone Great. translator app. All right. You will be asked to provide your name and the language you want to use. I look at the barcode. OK, great. So Attendees can me. also use this in the same language to help meet accessibility needs. OK, Harry. Are you in? Let me I think so. Check here. Good. Now I'm going to unmute my site to demonstrate the real-time translation capabilities between the presentation and the attendee devices. I want you to take a look at the translations at the bottom of the slides. La inteligencia artificial puede eliminar las barreras lingüísticas entre los presentadores y los asistentes. Lo que estás viendo es real y una gran demostración de la inteligencia artificial. Wow. I can even read here in Chinese. The PowerPoint translator adding custom trains the model based on my voice and my slides using the power of the custom speech service. And we're also making audience participation easier. The PowerPoint translator adding is bidirectional, and I can use it to unmute the audience and let them send questions and comments into the presentation. Harry, do you want to say something on your end in Mandarin? Well, I have to try my rusty Chinese. OK. 人工智能太棒了. Let's try again. Okay. 人工智能太棒了. Let me try again. Let's do that. 人工智能太棒了. There you go. How is that for an impressive demonstration of bringing office to life with AI? There it is.